Okay, today is Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. It is 5.11 p.m. This is recording for the Brainerd Noise Advisory Committee. Um, we currently do not have a quorum, um, but we um, do have a number of members that are present um, as seen. This recording will comply with the governor's executive order regarding public meetings, um, and this will be kept as a record for 10 years um, related, to, um, related to this meeting. With that, um, just so everyone's aware, uh, meeting minutes, because we don't have a quorum um, and the meeting, last meeting was in October. I have just recently resent those to the committee for review. Uh, so we won't take action on it tonight, but um, at least the committee will have it for review for the next meeting. The second item on the agenda is noise complaints for the last period of time. And uh, Matt Kelly from, um, do we is it technically Brainerd or CAA? What's the official? I, uh, I cover Brainerd. Oxford. I do the uh, accident investigation statewide. I do gotcha. uh, the licensing inspection. So I'm all over the place. So CAA probably best. We'll have, we'll have Matt take on the uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, so we had 19 communications. We're, you know, some were coming in via email. Uh, there were 854 propeller aircraft complaints, um, 15 helicopter complaints. I got an easy one for the helicopter. It was a National Guard. I was in communication. That was towards the end of January, beginning of February. <clears throat> I got with the tower on it and they don't really have a call on it because it was a National Guard. Um, they do what they wanna do and they have a reason for whatever they're doing south of the airport and we can't really call it into question. Um, there were very few jet operations. So we only had a couple of noise complaints on jets. Um, Pat, you had one, I think it was a uh, lumbering or something like that coming in early January. <clears throat> and then uh, the propeller complaints we're getting in large batches. It's kind of hard to track them when they come in, in such large back batches. But we did um, a number of times with Daryl, uh, got with the flight schools. We've got three flight schools now. And I think I said this at our previous meeting, who knew in the time of COVID that everybody's gonna to try to learn to fly? The flight schools are crazy busy. Um, it's pushing out our flight pattern. I, we've gone over this before. I don't wanna you know, beat a dead horse, but when it pushes it out, you have aircraft coming down the river. That means the ones coming up the river can't go over the river. <clears throat> so it pushes them more towards you. That's not every case but it's been just, I mean, ridiculous busy. I know Daryl is pushing really, really hard because one of the busy days, I think it was Easter Sunday, they actually, the tower called me and said, look, you're gonna get a lot of complaints. We don't know why it's so busy, but we're getting call, you know, aircraft constant overhead. They recognize it. <clears throat> you know, I, I've never had a tower manager work so much trying to mitigate stuff, you know, noise, um, but it's just, it's gotten crazy busy down there. And again, I'm not sure why this time of year, this month, April, we're probably gonna be pushing 5,000 operations at Brainerd. <clears throat> in past, I have to look back up, in past uh, April's, you know, we're three, two, you know, we've got a few, a number of years ago, back in 2014, we were over 5,000 operations. Um, and we'll get that when we talk about operations. But uh, the, the pattern has been very, very full. And, you know, I apologize. I mean, there's not much I can do when we get to that point. Um, <clears throat> we do need to kind of narrow down on the complaints you know, a little more description. I mean, if it was really loud or really low, um, but to get a call, you know, a list and just all the times, you know, I, I, it goes towards accounts. I, you know, I understand that. But if something's coming in really low, I want to be able to specifically target, you know, who that was. If, it's, if I get a list and 
I mean, you live there, you know, what's low, you know, what's, you know, exceptionally low and the guy that's just not flying the noise abatement. So I know a whole bunch of them are not flying the noise abatement and we are pushing that trying to when you're yeah. done, I'd like a chance to talk, please. I'm sorry, sure, I don't go know right if ahead. you can hear me, but when you're Is that Sarah? Yeah, it is. Yep. So go ahead and finish and then I will. No, 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 no. Okay. So the reason that I call and give you the numbers is because on some days there's over a hundred phone calls and it's, um, I would have to make over a hundred phone calls and that's absurd. What I'd like to know is, and I don't accept that there's nothing else that can be done. Have you contacted other airports to find out what other small airports have done to mitigate the noise, the noises? And oh. what is your success rate of contacting the um, pilots? But out of the 800 and whatever air um, complaints, 612 of them were from me. And that's absurd. It's clearly not working. There's got to be more. There's always, always more that can be done. Whether you work in management, whether you work in healthcare, whether you work at the post office, regardless of where you work, just saying there's nothing else to be done is not. A oh no, I'm not. I'm not saying nothing else can be done. I'm saying, I mean, we we're continuing to do it. We're we're meeting with the flight schools. Uh, you know. So are the flight schools the problem? Their busyness is part of it. Just because. Okay, then maybe you need to service. space out the flight school so that they're on. They're not all doing it at the same time. Is that we don't a have the authority to do that. We don't under oh, under okay. our FA. You know, grant assurances. We can't tell them they can't fly. No, I'm not saying you can't tell them they can't fly. Is there any way to space out the time that the schools are happening? Actually, Daryl and I, you know, chatted on one instance where one of the flight schools would all of a sudden have three planes taxi out all at once. That he sounds did. like it's not safe. <clears throat> no, no, it's 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 because everybody comes in. It's still safe because the tower is providing spacing, but it just puts a lot of people all together in the air. So Daryl did ask them to space it out. Right, you know, and I know, and you know what? Every single time that we talk, that's what the airport says, is that they've asked their flight schools to do a better job. So it's not whatever you're doing that in that piece, it's not working. Because if it was working, I wouldn't be calling you telling you there's over a hundred flights going over the over the uh, over my house. So I guess I I personally would like to hear what the plan is or what your suggestions are as a manager to make improvements because it's not enough. And you know, other people who are on this commission committee, if they have feedback as well. Maybe they feel that it's more than enough, but I personally and my husband feel it is not enough. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> this is Judy Keene. Hi, Judy. Oh. Hi. Um, so you know, always I, more to be done. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we were told at one time that there is no way that a plane could be within five minutes behind another one. And that's bunk because they are directly behind one another in the air. So they must be taking off at much closer to five minutes apart. Um, um, yeah. So I, I think that that's unsafe as well. Yeah, no, they come on, one on minute departures. after another minute. Sometimes they're in the same minute. And I'm gonna start to video them and start to take pictures. I'm gonna sit in my driveway and then you can tell me how, it, how your plan's working. Curious about this. I just, on, on departures, what the tower has to do is they have to provide, I think it's 3,500 foot separation. So when the aircraft becomes airborne and starts to climb out, he can have the next aircraft come on the runway, you know, for departure. Um, so it, yeah, it could in feasibly be within a minute. Um, I've never said within five minutes because the aircraft are doing going about 80 knots to 120 knots. If you're spacing around a jet, it's going to be further because you're going to have to have uh, wake turbulence and there's going to be a uh, gosh, two minute, three minute delay behind a jet. But from one aircraft propeller aircraft to another, um, they just can't be on the runway when the other one, you know, you can't have two aircraft on the runway at the same time. So timing, 
you know, it could be that close without a doubt. Well, you, we were told that it was not within five minutes of each other. So no, I don't know who minute. was misstating that. Yeah, no, it's it, behind a jet aircraft. You're going to have about three minutes of wake turbulence delay. Um, I'm not but, talking about jets. I'm not talking no, no, about no, the no, jets no, right no. now. That, yeah. That's the only one I would say that you'd have anything close to a five minute delay. You're going to have. Well, okay. Again, we were told years ago that it's impossible for one plane to be directly behind the other because it has, they had to be within five minutes. So no, it's, it's not, I a don't timing. know. Yep, it's not a timing thing. It's the time on the runway. You can't have two aircraft on the runway. So the time he touches down to the time he turns off, you can have the next aircraft land. So be no, that pretty as quick. It, 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 it can be if they're familiar pilots. Um, oh, Cindy. <laughs> oh, no, finish up, please. I just wanted to say be next. <laughs> no, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, that's kind of what it is for the timing on that. Right. They, they can get close together. I, I know they can. I, can, I have some inf information here from Judith Melkright, but I wondered if she wanted to share it herself. I see she's on the call. No, thanks, Cindy. I, I'm kind of distracted okay. here. I'm kind of half listening. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Matt, you know, I think you hear our frustration because despite your best efforts, it is, a, it is really a failure. So, Judith and her neighbor got up at 6 in the morning on April 10th, which is a Saturday, and they they monitored all the planes flying over their house. And I know you said earlier that it's hard when you get them grouped, but when you're getting a group of planes, it means those planes flew directly overhead of the people's houses that are calling you. Therefore, they're nowhere near the river and they're not complying with any voluntary you know, flight path. So beginning at 6.30 in the morning, by nine in the morning, there already had been 26 planes that had flown overhead. And as to Judy's point, they started at 7.39 and then 8, and then 8.06, 8.12, 8.14, 8.17, 8.21. I mean, they are coming right after the other, up until 9 a.m. They, they, they tracked these planes for 12 hours. There were 151 planes that flew directly over the homes of these people. They're not anywhere near the recommended voluntary flight path on the river. You know, and I don't know if they're flight school planes, private planes. It really doesn't matter. They, you know, they are, are intrusive and they are destructive. And we, you know, recently we've been hearing about the new commission that they're starting in Hartford about, you know, um, you know, climate and technology. I mean, every single one of those propeller planes is emitting lead in their exhaust and they're flying over people's homes and backyards. I mean, it is, the plan that you've devised is not working. And it's, I, I understand intent, but then you really have to concentrate on what are the results of this. And the results are is that the people of Wethersfield are really suffering because of the actions of the pilots, whether they're flight school or private, they're not complying. Can I, can I say something? And while they're talking, uh, oh, go ahead, Cindy. Sarah? Okay. Um, while you're talking about jets, the um, jets have been more intrusive lately because they're lower, they take longer to go over, and they happen to right now be right over my house most days. And it's later in the day that they come. But it is so noisy. I have to stop talking if I'm on the phone. And now I have a brand new crack in a, a plaster wall that was perfect before. And all of a sudden, I have a huge crack in it. So um, I, I think I can attribute that to um, the, these jets that are coming so low, so loud, and for so long. It seems like the, the noise is five minutes, ten minutes before they're finally over the house. Can I, can I say something? Yep. Okay. So what I'd like to say is... Um, is, you know, Matt, thank you for trying to explain to us about the spacing, but we're moving away from the issue. The issue is the planes are flying over our house. The weather is nice. They are supposed to be flying over the river. 
what is the plan? And saying there's nothing else that can be done is not acceptable. No, I'm not what, saying there's what nothing are else. The, yep. Well, it's, but this has been going on for years. Every single meeting saying, oh, we do our best. We're working on it. We're changing the flight school. We talk to those guys. It's not working. What else? What's the plan? And like in three months, can you come back with two or three new suggestions? Can you contact other airports and get some feedback from, from them? They're all over the country. What do other airports? Can you come back and tell us what your success rate is for um, contacting the pilot? What else, what else can be done? Because that's really the, 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 the meat of it is not to come and, I mean, we are complaining, but this complaining is useless if there's no plan to make changes. So that's where I stand. I don't know how everyone else <coughs> feels, but I assume that's all we need. Right. No, you know, I, I've been coming to these meetings for well over 20 years, right? and <clears throat> it's not doing anything for me. No. So all it is is a complaint session, and what we need to do is say, Matt, you need to come back to us and give us specific steps that you're willing to take. You're not a good neighbor, and you're not going to get support from us if you're not a good neighbor. I can't hear you. You're muted. There we go. Sorry. Um, over the past years, we have done a lot of things. I mean, we, we've done signs coming into the airport. We've no, I know you've done the signs. I know that you talked to the flight school people. But look, oh, no, I know. we are continuing to try to do different things, reaching out. Last meeting uh, that we had, I, I believe I talked to you, you know, we, we got on the AOPA representative. He was going to link the noise abatement to all his communications. Um, we thought that was going to help a lot. I mean, we're, we're, okay. we're not so just once sitting. Again, what do other airports do <clears throat> that are they, successful? Well, they do. I mean, basically what we're, we're doing now, but we can check on that. That's, I mean. Please do. Okay. So that's one thing that can be done. We can contact <clears throat> other airports and find out what has been the most successful step to help. What else? Yep. Anybody have any other ideas of what else might be helpful? I know you've been doing it for 20 years, Cynthia, and that's lovely. And I and you probably have had a million suggestions. I'm just trying to help us all. Well, you know what might be helpful, and this is Judy, not uh, Cindy. Oh, but I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. Cindy and I are friends, so that's okay. Um, I I think we need to get the um, federal, you know, agencies involved and find okay. out from them what could be done. Okay. And is that, so Matt, is that something that you would do? Um, I'd I, like I, to hear from you. them at a meeting. I'd like to get them oh, okay. involved in some idea. of these meetings. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll give that to Barry, but I don't know if that's something that they'll even come to. Okay. Um, but, you know. Well, if they know that a community is in outrage and that this has been going on for 20 years, um, I would think that they would want to hear what the problems are. And to be truthful, with these uh, jets flying so low, I'm just waiting for an accident to happen. Yeah, really. Yeah, really. I can link to the pilot. That's something I have to go I to Barry. I can link to the pilot and the jets. Yep, that's something I have to go to Barry and, and see if it's, you know, something we can reach out for. Who is Barry? He's my boss. He He's normally at these meetings, Sarah. Barry, what's his Barry name? Barry Palank. P-A-L-L-A-N-C-K. Okay, is he the manager of the, of the um, airport? He is the aviation administrator for the state of Connecticut. Or okay. Air, General Aviation Airport. airport. General airport Aviation airport. Manager. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks for that. You know, Matt, two questions. What percent of the takeoffs and landings come from the flight schools? Good question. The past couple months, not, not, we don't have it broken down to our flight schools, um, but a, a goodly percentage of the flight schools. They've just been so busy. So 50 Where typically we've got a lot more business. Pardon? 50 or 60 percent. I mean, what percent actually? Probably, you... probably over 60 percent. So those flight schools are located right on your property, right? correct? Not all of them, no. We, no. we have three of them that are very, very busy. And, you know, we, we have been talking to them. 
so and they're actually very good. To Sarah's point, you've got three flight schools that are located adjacent to your building where you could walk over there and say, you know, you cannot fly other than on the recommended route. That's it. We do that. Barry does that. And the tower does it. So it's Wild West. So that's where we're led, led to believe they do whatever they want. No, no, they know it's not the Wild West, but it's comes down to safety and it's the pilot's discretion, you know, what he deems is safe. And I'm not saying, you know, that, that there's nothing we can do. We are reaching out to them. We, you know, we had one school that was doing horribly on it. Um, and, and, you know, we have Amen. talked to them. Amen on that. They were bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they, I, I, <laughs> I do know it and I, and I know who yeah. they were and we, yeah. You know, reached out, you know, Barry as, you know, the administrator of general aviation or, or manager of general aviation has, has gone down there and asked. The tower manager has reached out to them because he told me about it. And if you listen to our tower uh, recordings or, you know, on the air, you'll hear constantly the tower referencing the noise abatement procedures. And yet it doesn't help. <clears throat> Nope, because it's basically a recommendation. And okay, uh, there is an airport compliance program <clears throat> that insists that if you receive any FAA funding, that um, airports must be in compliance. <clears throat> Do, does the airport receive any funding from the FAA? It does, but that's not a compliance re requirement. When the FAA did a noise study number of years ago. Um, yeah, that must have been a long time ago. Yep, but our operations are vastly down from there. Um, the, the, the noise on the aircraft, especially the jet aircraft, has declined so much. I, I don't see that. Well, and I'm not, I don't saying see that. Not, I'm not saying it's not loud. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, and, and let me take you to another airport, Oxford, where we had G3s and Hawker 8 or Hawker uh, 100, not Hawker, Falcon 100s, Falcon 200s, where you couldn't have a car alarm. You couldn't have a house alarm because when the jet took off, everything shook. Those were the older jets. The newer jets, they're loud, but they're not. The FAA has a threshold on noise limits. And they don't Matt, I, again, I think we need to be in contact with the FAA and have them repeat that study. Yep, yep. Um, and, you know, because this is not, not, not helping at all to talk to you. Every time we come to one of these meetings, it's the same thing over and over and over again. And uh, nothing happens. Nothing improves. I don't think you would like to live in old Weathersfield and listen to your airplanes all day. Uh, I'm different. I love airplanes, but we're, you we're know what? I, I'm, I'm under the downwind for Bradley. And, uh, it's, you know, when they come over, it's pretty loud here too. I understand it. Then why do you make us continue doing this over and over and over again? <laughs> I'm not making you do it. I, I am here listening and we take it back and we you know we do what we can that's within the confines of what we're able to do you know we can only request it's noise abatement voluntary noise abatement it's not a mandatory thing they don't make it mandatory well maybe the faa should make it mandatory well so, so Judy, i was actually going to say that so i guess the question is because and i understand i absolutely understand the frustration um i think credit to Credit to Matt, he does come to these, you know, quarter after quarter, and he and he and he takes it. Um, I do think to the point, you know, the question is, what's? It sounds like what we're looking for is what's that next level, right? And and there may not be a, there may not even be a solution going to the FAA. But I do wonder if there, if if there is a conversation that we need to have. And to Matt's point, we could ask the FAA to come. I do believe that you're going to have a hard time getting a representative here, but doesn't mean we can't ask to have a representative here or to see if there's another way. And I don't think that's, Matt, I, and I don't take it as an offensive comment because I think at the end of the day, you're trying to fall within your compliance regulations. 
and follow your own uh, procedures, ultimately it is a recommendation that you can make. So the, the next question is, well, how does that recommendation become something of a requirement? And there may not be, and to Matt's point, and I think what he's saying is there may not be the ability to enforce a requirement, but that might not come from CAA. Judy, to your point, that might be FAA. Um, so the question is, what's the, and I'm mad, I don't expect an answer right now, but what's the process to bring that to the next level um, to say, look, for, and I think, Judy, you said you've been coming to these for 20 years. Yeah, more than and, that. Yeah. You know, maybe that's a story that we need to tell to the FAA, which is, you know, we'd, we'd like them, we'd like something tighter. How do we do that? And let them come back to us and say, you can't. Or here's here are the mediation strategies, rather than um, you know if Matt if there's no way to put requirements in place at this level, then you go to the next level, um, and and they may not go anywhere. But um, it doesn't sound like we can do it here because it sounds like they don't have the authority. It's only a recommendation, not a requirement. And well, which I, I have understand, my I, I understand. I, I do have my marching orders so far of what else can be done, what are other airports doing, and can we get the FAA you know, to one of our meetings. And I, I will bring that, you know, to Barry and see how we go through the channels to uh, reach out for that. So you didn't, you forgot the flight schools. Six no, 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 that's that's yeah. an ongoing. I We always do that. I mean. Maybe they should come to listen to the meetings and put a face to the, you know, people that are suffering from what they're doing. We used to, yeah, we used to have a couple of the flight schools come. And, you know, we can request it again. You should, yeah, I think you should. They should know that, you know, every time that they're joyriding over our homes, that it interferes with our ability to, you know, lead a peaceful, quiet life. There were times when the uh, flight schools were attending our meetings. Some. Yep. Yeah, about three years ago, two yeah. years ago. Yep. They, they were coming routinely. We could try again. So Cindy, it's added to the list. <laughs> Thank you. I'd love to talk to you. You know, Matt, uh, I, it just seems very unfair that we have to live in this. It's like torture, really, some days. Um, in this environment where there is no peace and quiet, despite all of our efforts. And uh, it just does not seem fair at all that people are making money on this, uh, on the... Um, the airport, and yet they're trotting on our rights to peace and quiet in our own homes. I'm hoping that you understand that. No, I, I completely understand. I do. Matt, maybe, maybe you and I can follow up and over the next period of time and just figure out what the, I'm just on the FAA website right now. Um, yeah, I just got off of it yeah, as well. It'd, it'd be through airports division somewhere. Um, just I to, just, you know, just I, to, I, I don't want to lead you down a path that you think, uh, you know, there's a resolve there through the FAA because when the FAA looks at airports and they look at Brainerd, they say, there's no noise issue. And I'm not saying that. I'm not, you know, it's not me. But, you know, they're looking at national, all the different airports, you know, in the nation. And, you know, we get lumped in with, you know, LaGuardia and, and TF Green and Bradley and, you know, those noise issues. They're, they're not going to differentiate the DNL, the day night noise average level around the airports between different airports, I think. I mean, is you know, there a, a person that you always speak with or that you communicate with at the FAA or an office that you communicate with? I don't, I, other than when I'm taking care of accidents or new airports, but um, that'd be through my main office, um, Barry and above, that would reach out. Well, I'm just wondering if we decided to write a letter to the FAA, who would we uh, send it to? Could you get us that information? Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to Barry and then, you know, get it to Gary when you and I follow up, Gary. 
Barry's back uh, Monday, so. Uh, to Matt's point, our airport was a lot louder when this um, noise abatement committee was started in the 80s. Uh, there were many, many more planes. There were many, many louder jets that were much, much louder. And when they were doing the master plan a few years ago, five or seven years ago, they re-studied. They put monitors on several points in State Street in Maine. Uh, they had um, people monitoring uh, along by Main Street, uh, the big church. And what they found was the noise level has gone down significantly so that in today's decibel levels, there would be even a smaller footprint of noise abatement area than there was and then what's on the maps right now, based on the 86 or the 81 uh, studies when, when they started it. So, um, you know, that's what the FAA will be looking at. And that's the, the kind of volume that they're likely to see. Um, so is it time for another noise study? Hmm, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I... I yeah. Again, I got to defer to Barry and upper management um, just because it was at the master plan and the operations haven't changed much. So they have that data. Um, you know, we'll just, but I'll, I'll mention it to Barry. In the 80s, was the, were the flight schools as large a portion of the flights as they are now, above 60%? Probably. It was, it was a very busy training airport even back then. Um, back then, I mean, there, there was a lot more helicopter activity that was in and out of the airport. Um, I was actually flight training out of Brainerd back in the 80s, so I could have been one of the people back then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's, it's the, the style of the airport hasn't changed that much, um, you know, the usage. But uh, no, we'll, I'll get and hopefully get a name from FAA for a contact. We'll, we'll catch up and try to think through some of these things and the noise study and, you know, how to go from there. I'll just mention, be careful what you wish for people with noise studies, because if it goes to show that there's not a noise issue, it's going to be a much different fight um, or a harder fight, harder fight. or argument. Um, that being said, um, next item on the agenda, my computer works with me. Operations. <laughs> operations. Operations or projects? Operations? Um, operations is normally. Yeah, operations. Yep. So the operations last year, I'm not sure if I said this when we were talking before, but um, overall, the year end was up about 1.6, 1.7% increase in operations. So it was not a huge increase, but it was because in the beginning of the COVID, flights, everything dropped off initially. And then towards the end, when everybody can get back in a plane, everybody started to want to learn how to fly. Um, that's continuing on to now. This month, you know, jumping ahead, um, we could see 5,000 operations at Brainerd that we haven't seen yeah, since 2014. Um, you know, as many operations for an April. Uh, our first Order. Um, actually, Gary, I emailed you the list. I don't know if you can put that up or not the list, the uh, PDF of the operations. You got to patch the, okay, hold on. <clears throat> um, I know you had given so, me a summary, but. Yep. Okay. So January was down a little bit. Uh, last year it was 3552. This year was 3300. So January was quiet. Um, February, 
mainly due to the weather was down. It was uh, a little more than half what we had last year. Went from 4,000 down to 25, 24 and change. Actually, here comes, there it is. So now you can see it down in the bottom. Um, but as you see March, as the weather started increasing, we started getting really busy. And April is not showing any change from that. Um, you know, we'll have more than double the aircraft in April as we did last year. Operations, not aircraft. Not aircraft. Well, March is really March or February was really down because of weather. Um, there just wasn't, you know, a whole lot going on. March, you know, you can see did jump up a good bit. And, uh, you know, if it continues, yeah, you know, we're going to be probably 10% over what we did last year or so, just a ballpark. Um, the good thing is, this initial batch, the guys will start getting their pilot's licenses and start flying elsewhere. <laughs> Could help. Um, but uh, that's, I mean, that's it for operations on what we've got going right now. You know, just, just as a side note, because you mentioned the pilots might get their license and go somewhere else, I'd be curious <clears throat> to know how many of them are local. Uh, and I'm only thinking from an outreach standpoint, it's easier to convince pilots to do a certain thing if they have some local roots. We get a lot of New York flight training in Connecticut, across the board. Um, and I mean, that's just a normal because they can fly across Long Island Sound, they get you know, over the water time, and then they'll come in, do three or four touch and goes, and then go back to Long Island. Yeah. That, that happens at all the Connecticut airports. Um, our local people, I mean, we, we are doing outreach and, you know, we'll continue, we'll push it more, if, you know, as we come into the spring and summer months, because we're going to have to, I mean, it, it's obviously not working right now. So we will continue to push that. Um, but the, One of those things sometimes when you find their pain, you know, they start to understand, <clears throat> they can start to relate and they might be a little bit more considerate about how they act, you know, if they were from the area or there's a connection to the area, just, mm -hmm. just a thought. Yep, yep. Gary, will you email that to the committee, the operations, please? Yep. Thank you. Hey, this is Bobby. Does anyone hear me? Yep. Yes. yes. Okay, uh, trying to get in for a while. Uh, Matt, are you there? Yep. Matt? Yes. Okay. Uh, hey, friends. Uh, you know that my thrust has been uh, safety all my life, of course. Uh, however, I've been spending a lot of time in uh, old Weathersfield Center lately. There's a few good restaurants I like. And lo and behold, uh, two weeks ago, it became a very apparent to me that, uh, and I'm asking Matt, uh, you still there, Matt? Yep, Matt? I am. Okay. Yep. Uh, I'm asking you, Matt, and anyone else, uh, the... The first church spire, as well as that of the flagpole, which the flags are still half fast, as you know, for Walter Mondale, but be that as it may, the uh, AGL, above ground level of um, uh, height of the <coughs> spire, and of course it's adjacent flagpole. I observed a jet that came rather close to that on the way into the airport. <coughs> And I was yeah. concerned. Uh, yeah. And a, a, I think it was Cindy that mentioned accidents waiting to happen. And of course, I've spoken on, spoke on this before with the group. And I'm new with the group uh, about 30 or 5 or 40 years as well. Yeah, new. Uh, I know. <laughs> but uh, Gary, young uh, not, uh, Gary or uh, Matt, you notice if it's uh, noted to the pilots, especially in a flight school, that this. If, if they're flying. If they're flying low, the, the tower does get a low level alarm on, uh, you know, because they're mode C. Let me, I'm trying to think the easiest way. Their aircraft reports to the tower the altitude. And if they appear really low, you know, it can trip a mode, a, a low altitude alert. Well, that's and, good. Uh, that jet the tower is coming can... in pretty. I'm, I'm not criticizing you, Matt, whatsoever. You're, you're a good friend. But uh, okay, and I know a little bit about electronics. I've been in 
field all my life. Uh, be that as it may, uh, by the time you get a low alert, that jet coming in is cruising at a good rate. Uh, and he, yeah. was, he was really close in proximity to the tower uh, uh, next to it. Uh, I didn't say it was exactly over it, but it was uh, within 50 yards of that tower. So I'm wondering if there's enough consideration and, if you will, protections there, because that that I don't want any anything to hit that any aircraft to hit that at all. I know low, what you're talking about is the glide slope and so on. But mm -hmm. I think, I think it, people, sh especially the students, it came to mind just now as a function of the myriad students that you know, the copious amount of students rather, that you now have uh, are really cognizant of uh, First Church, its tower and the adjacent flagpole. It could be a problem. Let's look into that, please. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you. I mean, that, that's a conversation I'll have with Daryl, uh, the tower manager, um, just to I see think, if he is I getting routinely should... low altitude alarms. Yes, that'd be good. And with, with real consideration of those two appendages, uh, I, I, it, it doesn't appear to me that, that it's well, well, well thought of. I know it's there, been there for a few hundred years. First Church is well over 300 years old. Uh, it's fire, at least. And uh, I just wonder if, if there's a consideration. As a function of the fact that you have these new students and so on, and that you got new people coming in on, with jets on that glide slope. And boy, if, if that's, that's close. I observed it myself, and I was concerned two weeks ago. It wasn't a noise complaint, but... It's a physical complaint that I think it was Cindy that mentioned, what's the public safety here? And I was I looked at public safety in all of my life and this is a consideration. Thank you. Well, Bobby, can I just add one thing? This is Judy again, um, yeah. Judy Keene. Um, I believe that the pilots are using the steeple as their guidance. That's a good they, observation. They, I think. they really aren't because I mean, I, I flew for years. When when you're looking out, even that far out, you are focused on the runway. Well, and, and, and at night it's lighted, so it's right there for them to to glide right past. And but the runway is lighted too. You have to do a hundred percent of your attention on you know the runway end where you are looking at landing, and you know where you're, what's immediately around you. Carol, yeah, obviously they're not. <laughs> No, no, I know, but you're not going to use a landmark, you know, like that to line up. If you were three miles out, you very well might. But in that close proximity, your full attention is on the runway. And I, I think uh, Lindsay took a number of people up flying. And I don't I know if anybody noticed it. I was one of them. Okay. At night, too. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, but yeah, awesome. it'd be very hard to line up on that and then, you know, switch over to the runway. They're, well, know. well, Matt, I did observe. I did observe a jet. Yeah, no, I, I will check on that, Bobby. And and yeah. you know, the, the key would be low altitude alarms if, if we're getting them, and you know, the the tower is my first line of defense on that. So okay, we'll, we'll the tower and the flagpole, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and the flagpole. Okay. All right. Yes, it, it, it was a concern to me, and I was, I was standing right there looking at it. I said, wow, wow, we have a potential here. Mm -hmm. And that was just one night. Imagine every single night when you're trying to live a, a normal life, having that jet come over. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. It's frightening. It's frightening that it's so low. I was the one that said I was waiting for an accident. It is so low that it is going to happen. I brought up the accident thing, uh, if you'll recall, a couple of years ago. Uh, no, last year you did. No, a year, a year ago. Too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No. Projects. Whatever you can do. Okay. Not a whole lot has moved along with projects, and I don't have a lot of background because it's in our engineering. 
but we still have the land swap with MDC that's uh, progressing slowly. And that's to fill in that lagoon, the sediment pond at the end of the runway. Um, it's, it's back and forth. I don't see anything happening on that until uh, next year, um, you know, early, early in the next year, as best I can figure. Um, the other one is obviously the obstruction and that's still in design and permitting. So I don't really have an update from the last time we met on that. It's been in design and it's been in permitting for quite a while. Um, I do know that uh, there was an environmental walkthrough um, with different representatives, you know, the MDEEP or some, I'm not even exactly sure, I'd have to look it up. Um, the other day, or actually, no, I'm sorry, it was this morning, losing my time. Um, and, um, but that's, it's still a ways out for the uh, permitting. Do you know, Matt, where they walked? Were they walking in Wethersfield? Uh, they met up on the dike uh, on the end of uh, our roadway and, you know, went in via that way. So into Folly Brook, into the conservation <clears throat> area? No, 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 no. They, they were up on top of the dike when they, they walked. Um, this is just a very, you know, preliminary thing. Um, we, we have asked, um, at least I think it's been asked, for uh, some additional cuttings, not additional to the project, but cuttings more you know quicker than than the whole project and I, I don't know where that is either because uh there's a few that penetrate that are closer to the runway that we're looking at, we're looking at. and so that's what any weathersfield representatives that were uh <clears throat> at this walk i i don't know um no this was all this uh deep and all um i can see hang on, let me see if i have the list so this would be the hartford trees that are managed by the nature yep. conservancy um, not sure if it was a crosswind. I believe it was, it may, they met up at the north end in Hartford. Okay. Um, up closer to the, uh, trash energy plant. Okay. So, not at the south end near the nature conservancy. I don't know if they made it down there. I mean, it, it, that's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, just trying Gary, to it would be important if they're having walkthroughs for Wethersfield to have a representative there, <clears throat> yeah. somebody that has, you know, the authority to report back to the town council about what's going on. I mean, I just, I, I guess my thought is we might I'm trying to think how to phrase this, depending upon where they are in their permit process, we're not necessarily invited to the table. It doesn't mean we don't have a voice in the future. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, now, not all meetings are public meetings between entities. Um, doesn't mean we can't have a voice. It just doesn't mean we, we are not at a phase where we're at the table. But we can have, I can have that conversation about, you know, town of Wethersfield needs to be part of this. I mean, frankly, I have had that conversation with Deep about Wethersfield needing to be part of the conversation. Unfortunately, it doesn't mean we get invited to every part of the conversation. Okay, understood. But I mean, if there is something going on, I would hope Weathersfield would be at least informed, even if we're not at the table, about what's happening. Yeah, you would think. Terry, I'll, I'll find out before we chat. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to our project management. Yeah, and we have reached out to Deep a little bit um, regarding making sure we're, you know, no actions are taken without conversations with us. Um, but they do have a process that they will follow, and some of that in, it, we're allowed to be at, others we're not similar even here on this level where we might have conversations with a with another public entity about what we're looking to do and doesn't you know until it gets a certain stage where it needs to be public we don't necessarily have it because it's you know, part of a negotiation or part of a permitting process that might not be uh, yet um, accessible to the public as you're working out details. They know they know we're out there. And I'm looking it up now. And actually, it was uh, just the consultants that are working on the plan. So it was not DEEP. My apologies. Cindy, would it now be a good time to talk about another project, the decommissioning of Brainerd? We have Hartford interests at this uh, uh, meeting. 
I don't think so. I don't think it's the appropriate venue, this being a no. noise committee. Hmm. Well, I, I have nothing I, have a voice. I can share on that. I don't have any information. No, that. I, I know it's been brought up and, uh, um, you know, it, it'd be nothing that the CAA would initiate or, or you know, no, but the, at the legislative level, we were hoping to get some movement on it. And then we would have a few comments to make, I'm sure. Yep. Well, that'll be, you know, a whole another set of meetings. That's uh, not uh, for the noise. And people way above me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt, are you aware that there is a movement? Yep, very much so. Um, just all I get is the rumor mill. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I've got mixed feelings just because uh, it's where I began my career. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. We'll definitely have a little museum there with your uh, name in it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, any other items? No, sir. You have a meeting at six. I think. Six o'clock. Yep. Yeah. I'm actually texting them now, saying I'm a few minutes behind. I'll start it in a moment. Because mm -hmm. if I don't, as I just learned recently on one commission, if I don't start exactly at a certain time, people get a little nervous. Like, is it on? Is this thing working? Am I? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I. Well, it, we might be able to adjourn, folks. Yeah, it worked. We're so, good. So an unofficial mo motion to adjourn because we have no um, we have no quorum. But Matt and I will catch up, and you know, see um, see what we can figure out for a process. Okay. Thank you, everyone. This thank is about you. Thank, 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 thank you. All. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right.